Hi, I'm Oliver. This is Deep Cuts, a music channel about music for lovers of music, music geeks, and people that just want to find out a little bit more. Today, I'm going to do an introduction to jazz. I think jazz for me was probably the biggest mountain to climb in terms of musical discovery. It's really difficult. There's so many avenues you could start on. It's kind of like, where do I start? Where's the best place for me to truly be able to appreciate this genre of music? Because there's so many incredible things about it. But where could you start? I mean, the list literally goes on forever. You have bebop, hard bop, gypsy jazz, cool jazz, west coast jazz, jazz funk, acid jazz, punk jazz, new jazz, neo jazz, jazz hop, new jazz, have I said new jazz? Gypsy jazz, I've definitely said gypsy jazz. So I thought I would come up with five records that you should listen to that would give you a good appreciation and entry into jazz and try and help you discover some of the amazing delights that can be in there if you persevere. I really struggled to work out a structure for this video. I thought either I can go and take a few different genres within jazz, so subgenres, and pick an album that maybe describes that genre the most, but I just shot myself in the foot with that because there are so many that are like, well, I, mean, I, just, I just told you at least 20 there, although I did repeat myself a few times. There's a lot of genres and I couldn't do it over five records. I couldn't even do it justice. So I thought, well, let's go to the peak, the, the, the creative peak of jazz, the late 1950s, the early 1960s. 1959 saw the release of so many influential records um, and from there on, up to 1964, 65, every year there were just a handfuls of incredible experiences. I will try and define each genre when I do these discussions on how to get into a genre. I'll try and define them, but I have shot myself in the foot because jazz is so difficult to define. I, I couldn't even begin to start with all of those different subgenres. So um, all I'm going to say is swing grooves, improvisation, um, teamwork, group work, um, and challenging. I don't even know why I said that. That's just a set of meaningless words, really, isn't it? Number one, Miles Davis' Kind of Blue, released in 1959. This is probably the quintessential jazz album. Everyone in your nan's got this album. Literally every single person you could possibly imagine has this somewhere in their house. And they've all heard it. Everyone likes this album. And you can see why. This is why I've started with it, because it is quintessentially jazz. Miles Davis is one of the pioneers of hard bop, which is uh, where bop originally occurred through jazz. And throughout, from the 40s onwards, the styles of blues and gospel started influencing the jazz greats of the time. So we got a more rhythmic, a more blues, a rawer version of bop, which is hard bop. Now, Miles Davis is one of the true pioneers of that genre. Second of all, this album probably has one of the best recording lineups ever in the history of jazz. When you start to, if you know some of these jazz musicians, you'll know what I mean. Cannonball Adderley on the alto sax. John Coltrane on the tenor, Paul Chambers on bass, Bill Evans on piano, and Jimmy Cobb on drums. That's an incredible lineup. And when you start getting into jazz more and you listen to this album again, you will realize quite how influential that lineup is. The great thing about this album is it's very laid back, but there's a real bit of experimentation in, there in its modality. Um, and Miles Davis is always messing around with modes, taking a key and then transposing that key again to the next section of music so always changing that and that makes it quite a challenge but it's a very laid back piece of music as well so I think it's quite a good introduction in that way I mean just listen to the opening notes of of the first track so what it's a beautifully tranquil and that will carry throughout that entire album um, I can't recommend that enough as I said everyone and your nan will like this album so undeniably the place to start get tucked into this one it's it's brilliant number two uh, Dave Brubeck Time Out 1959 again this was in the December of 1959 and I think Kind of Blue came out on the August. This this is a nice break from the modality of Kind of Blue. It's probably a little bit more of what people might imagine when they think of jazz quintessentially. It's quite it's light and it's upbeat and it's it's, it's got elements of cool jazz and west coast jazz as well. But the one thing that really changes that up is its time signatures. You've got a load of time signature changes. So you have 9-8 used in the first and the first bar of the first track, uh, Rondo a la Turk. That straight away is very different to Western ears. So that straight away is challenging things. You've got a 9-8. He uses 5-4, uh, 6-8, 6-4. So many different time signatures. It makes it a really interesting experimental piece without 
tonally being much of a challenge. This is probably a favorite album of mine to, to play along to on the drums. It's really got a great flow to it and you can really jam across to it. The time signature flows, they're so much fun. There's, there's, there's a lot of fun in this. It feels quite lighthearted as an album. It, the whole, all the pieces are great. Everyone's heard of Time Out, I'm sure, which is the single most popular track on this album. Everyone's heard of it. If you don't know the name, you definitely would have heard it. A um, little bit of interesting trivia, it's the one single song on the album that Dave Brubeck didn't actually write. So, unlucky Dave. Number three, Thelonious Monk, Brilliant Corners, 1957. So, two years before the other two albums that I've mentioned. First off, Thelonious Monk is an incredible pianist really influential for the time he was doing things that no other pianist was doing and, and dealing, putting jazz down a different path. The two records that I've spoken about so far are traditionally quite horn based, that's their primary instrument they get stuck into. This is, this is piano driven. His style of playing, he incorporates a lot of atonality, so dissonance on the ear, which can be quite a challenging thing. At the same time, um, he's very percussive, so he'll, he'll bash the piano keys, smack them around, you really get a physicality to his playing. I love that, you can hear that in the recordings, I can't, can't imagine what it must have been like live. Uh, live he often used to stand up on top of the piano and stop playing, um, do a little dance and then jump back down and play again. So I think that gives you a bit of an idea of the personality of Thelonious Monk. This album's bright and exciting, it's definitely hard bop, it's, it's, it's more challenging than, than Time Out, um, and it's, but it's harder, um, but it's still got that it's got all that element of fun to it. Try and find more Thelonious Monk because you'll really get into it once you've once you've really had a chance. Number four, Charles Mingus, Black Saint and the Sinner Lady. This came out in 1963, and this album is is probably my favourite jazz record of all time. I've heard this so many times, I couldn't even count. Charles Mingus is he's an inc incredible bass player, but also an incredible composer, and that was the thing he became known for was his band arrangements. He was very hot headed though. That's one of the things that goes down his legacy. He was a hot-headed, very, very fiery temper. Um, think Whiplash, that film, you know, the film with Miles people, and I, I can't remember the names of the people that are in it. Think about the, the band leader in that film, how extreme he was. I think that's, that's probably part of the inspiration, really, was Charles Mingus. He was, he was a formidable man. He would fire people on stage if they didn't agree with his arrangements. He'd get rid of them. So he was pretty formidable but his music's incredible. There are a lot of other, there's a couple of other Mingus records around that era that I could have picked, like Mingus, 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 Ming, it's three Minguses, Mingus, 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 and Mingus Ah Um as well. Those two are probably more conventionally hard bop. This album was my own personal introduction to the man and his music, and I know it's very different to some of the other conventional ones we could have spoken about, but this is just unbelievable. I love it. The entire album's four pieces of music arranged like a ballet, so you've got group track A, B, C, and then I think group D. Four pieces that are arranged like a, in a balletic form. So you have motivic development, motifs coming in and developing throughout the piece, and then themes um, coming from the beginning of the first track and inserting themselves into the middle of the third track and constantly revisiting and reworking these themes. This is why I definitely recommend you sit down with headphones and really get sucked into it. It feels like it's really telling a story, like a, like a ballet would. It's, it's unbelievable. Check this out and then check out Mingus, 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 and then check out Mingus at um after as well. You would not be disappointed about this album. Also, how good is the album cover? It's it's like a work, it's a work of art. I want that on my wall. I can't find I can't find an LP of it anywhere, but I when I find it, it'll be up there behind it. You'll see. Number five, this this is getting some serious shit now. Ornette Coleman, The Shape of Jazz to Come, 1959. I've saved this one to last because it really gets crazy from here on out. This is avant-garde free jazz. This is a tonal hard it's hard to listen to it's very challenging i mean if you found black saint and the sinner lady challenging this is going to blow your fucking head off it this is a hard this is a hard listen i've put it in there because the other ones are conventional they're easy for you to get into and this is a real introduction to to free jazz this this broke people when it came out i think in 1959 this this was this was real really groundbreaking ornette coleman was a polymath i mean he played uh he played sax, he played violin, he played trumpet, he was a good composer, but saxophone was his, was his main instrument and that's what he's known for. He's known for this real wailing, screaming sound. It's, uh, it's, it's a really harsh, it really cuts through the band that he plays with, really cuts through. Um, and that's unlike any sound. I mean, 
it was described as playing through the uh, the cracks. That was the cracks in the scale. It was known as because it was very slightly sharp, and it, we're not trained to hear those sounds. So it just adds another layer of challenge on top of what's already freely improvised bass drums sections that free flow for two or three minutes and then jump back to the theme for a little bit at the end of a track. It's really, really hard to, to follow. It feels like you're being smacked around the head for the entire duration of the album. This is really weird as well. Ornette played a plastic sax. I don't know if it was just for this record or for other things, but he played the plastic sax and that gave the timbre of the instrument way more atonality and made it sound, makes it sound cheap and squealing and dark it's it, it's it's a really strange choice but it does fit this this kind of free flowing experimental exotic confusing sound it's confusing it's going to confuse you when you first hear it it still confuses me i can't say that i understand a lot of it um, but it's a real experience to listen to and if you want to get into jazz you have to experience something like the shape of jazz to come yeah just go out and do it now so there you have it that's five albums to get you interested, excited into the insane world of jazz. It's an exciting place and hopefully from those five records you'll find loads of different avenues that you like and you'll explore so much amazing content. You'll get stuck in jazz forever, you'll become one of those weird jazz people that hang out in the back of smoky bars. Oh, I suppose you can't have smoky bars anymore in England, can you? Well, pretend it's smoky. There's going to be a lot more videos on genres on this channel. We're going to talk about different genres, different artists, things going on in the world of music. I want to get some really good discussions going. Please subscribe if you're interested in this kind of content. Comment below. Um, let's get some discussions going, especially comment if you don't agree with my top five. Let's tell me why. Let's, let's discuss. Thank you.